Okay, Jamie, do you, is, this a, is this a good time to talk football? Should we talk football now? It's the perfect time to talk football. Football is back. It's back. Uh, let's pull the curtain back. Let's, let's, let's pull the curtain back. We've talked about uh, an episode segment where we talked about how to watch football for a year, over a year. And, yeah. it, and it's never fit. It's never worked. But we're like, we're doing it. We're doing it now. It makes sense. It matters. And then I think from judging the response we got on social media, I think it was a good decision. What do you think? People have a lot of feelings about football. So many feelings. So oh many feelings. Um, so what we want to do is we want to do some uh, some things we don't like about football, uh, about watching football with other people, and then some tips and tricks you can apply when you're in a football watching setting uh, for how to overcome some of the awkwardness that may rise up. And then we'll we'll probably go and get some of the input from the people on social media and how they responded. Does that sound good? That sounds perfect. Can I go first? Sure. Can I talk about my biggest pet peeve? Mm -hmm. My biggest pet peeve is that a lot of times, and I'm not going to speak for you, Knox, you can defend your gender and that would be fantastic. But I get into a lot of environments where I'm a college football fan. And so I like to go to people's houses and watch college football, partly because I don't have cable. (laughs) I I need to depend on the kindness of friends. But then part of it is I go to those houses, like a friend's house that I went to last week. And when I went to their house, they set up seating in the big room with the big TV. And there were 20 people invited. Okay. There were uh, 12 guys, eight women. Okay. Do you know how many seats were in the big room with the TV? I'm probably two couches, probably five total seats. 12 seats. Oh, wow. Okay. There were 12 seats. So there were seats for all of the guys. Okay. So when three of us came in, three of the women came in to sit and at the very beginning of the game, and they were like, oh, are y'all going to watch the game? Because it was this assumption that we were not going to watch the game. And I want you to know that in this little ranch-style house in the middle of Alabama, a feminist uprising occurred. Oh, wow. And women went crazy. Like, because they were like, why? And we ended up having a huge fight over why would you think that women don't watch football? And they're like, well, we just thought you, like one of the guys genuinely, and he's single, and that's not a surprise. One of the guys genuinely said, well, I just thought y'all like making the appetizers. And oh, stuff. wow. Went the wrong way with that one, bud. Oh, my gosh. And so I looked at some stats. 44% of the NFL viewing audience is women. Okay. So that's a huge. And uh, NFL is the preferred sport of women ages 12 and older. So let's not be shocked when a woman likes and understands football. Le, um, in in turn, you said there were twenty people there. There were twenty people, and yes. you, you three of you guys rolled up right in the beginning. Right at the beginning. How many? How many of the twenty had arrived by then? All of them were there. All so you were the there. last three. You we, were eighteen, oh, nineteen, and twenty. Room. The tw- not all the men had gotten into the room. I feel like we're spending too much time on this math. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm trying to pin you down on uh, – it's not feminist so if you're late. There were 20 late. people in the house. Three of the women go into the room where there's 12 Are seats. Are you a late not person? Are people. you normally late? We're in the room. We're already in the house. We're this eating is, This is food. asking. This is asking. I'm never late. I'm <laughs> actually – I think people who are late are selfish oh, no. and choose everything over. Like if you're late listening right now, if you're a late person, everybody thinks you're selfish and doesn't like you. That's just a heads up, everybody. It's true. I'm sorry. There's, right? There's like an, and just don't. Just don't. Just be early. Just be early. And don't ever say to anybody in a room, if you don't know everybody, never say, yeah, I'm just, all, I'm just a late person. No. no. You've made a decision to put anything over being on time and being respectful. You of would you'd be better you. off to be like, I'm a psychopath because then I would be like, well, yeah, that, they didn't rather, really control that. That's brain chemistry. Yeah, I would rather hear you're a sociopath right. than tell me that you're just a late person. That's just poor judgment is yeah. your problem. So, yes, um, not late. So the three of us come in right at the beginning of the game. And but it's still not the, an last, the last of the group. And you wanted mm-hmm. seats on the couch. No, no, no. We hmm. were not the last. There were still men in the kitchen. That's interesting. Why are you making this so Do you think horrible? you have entitlement issues? Would that be a fair? <laughs> no, I have issues with the guys who set up the room thinking we don't need 20 seats because these eight women are not going to come in here. Sure. Okay. I think, I, think the, I think the problem is expectations. You have specific expectations for guys hosting. When guys host, they're like, do I have room for where I want to sit? And if that answer is yes, they don't need to do anymore. That's the that's the presumption. Then you do not need to host a nice get together. You do not need to host a shindig at your house. I'm not saying you're wrong, we'll host, Jamie. 
I'll host it at my house and I'll have 20 seats. And no cable to watch the game on. <laughs> well, that's true. My, can I give you one of my pet peeves? Okay. If you're watching football and like you're, you're not sure what to do or how to be or who to root for, let me say this. This is like an overriding principle. Don't be the asshole cheering for the other team when everyone else is cheering for one team. Okay? Walk into the room. If three-fourths of the group is cheering for one team, either cheer for that team also or don't cheer for a team actively. Okay? Because no one likes the person cheering for the other team. Um, and, and you won't like it either because two things happen. A, your presence, your active presence will annoy everyone. Why are you here? Why are you with us? And if your team is winning, it makes it even worse. B, uh, you will become a monument to their frustration if they're losing or their antagonism if they're winning. It's just a, it's a no win. So just don't do it. Why are you coming to a party for a football game and you don't like football? And you're sitting in the room trying to watch it. Why are you even doing that? I, you just want to be social, I guess. I don't know. Now go in the kitchen. It's like, go in the kitchen. Go in the kitchen with the men. That if you're bringing that to the table, just like just don't come or come and be like I have I have no expectations for how I should be treated because I bring nothing to the table. That's true. I don't antagonize for the sake of antagonizing. Oh my gosh! I would agree with that. That's horrible. I, my pet peeve about football in general, about watching football, is the very fact. And this is really this is a a pointed finger at the powers that be. Why are we watching football on Thursday? Why is Thursday football even even on the calendar? Cause they're, Did they're that like, happen? Because they're going to be like, how many? It's a heat check, basically. They're going to be like, how much can we put on, and how will people watch? Like Wednesday morning, at ten a.m. People watch. Okay, we'll do that, and they do it until we say no more. They'll keep doing it. Well, we need to say no more. We watch Scandal on Thursdays. We do not watch football mm, on Thursdays. That's true. What are we doing? I, I don't to, like. That. I need to see Fitz being the worst president in the history of the U.S. presidential apparatus heck yeah where is olivia pope she's on some beach i gotta know that i don't gotta know if uh baylor has a really nice stadium with fake bricks i don't need to know that <laughs> that was oddly specific that was oddly was, specific. i'm very angry about their fake brick stadium um okay here here's a here's a tip or, or something to never do what basically like if, if you're not if you're not familiar with football, still come. Like don't feel like you can't come. This isn't like soccer where you have to know every aspect of it to be able to contribute to the conversation. Come. It's just be come correct, basically. Okay. So people who watch football, we love questions. We want to help you understand, okay? But there's there's a there's a, a delicate balance, okay? Big questions like uh what does all this mean? Uh is is Nick Saban <laughs> a reptile or a human those go in the commercial breaks okay save those for the commercial breaks quick questions like hey uh have 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 they gotten over 100 yards rushing yet that's fine boom real quick we can do those we can do that does Peyton Manning look like he has a fetus head yeah boom yes okay we can answer that quickly ask those during the game <laughs> big broad general questions commercial breaks save those for the Zach's Feast Taco Bell commercials can you tell me more about who's asking about have we reached over 100 yards rushing? Lots of who's people. Asking that? Who are asking those questions? Lots of people, Jamie Gold. Why would they even want to know that? You know what? Uh, if you were on time to games more, you would probably understand the sequential order of some of these questions, but you're not, and it's fine. I just don't think that's even necessary to understand. Okay, so I, along with that, to piggyback on that, I also want, if you understand football, if you understand why – they are having to play in the end zone because of the kick. Like, if you understand why that's happening, don't ask why it's happening. Don't be that, and it's a girl, you know it is, a girl who's like, I don't, I so said, why is the team facing that way now? I, they were facing that. Stop it. Stop it. Do not pretend, do not, do not feign ignorance just because you think it's adorable. Also, don't feign ignorance if you are wearing a pink bedazzled football jersey, <laughs> because I will not have it. I will not have it. No, ignorance is not adorable and comprehension is not impressive. Just be normal. Like, don't, normal. don't try to tell me detailed bio info or the schematics of the zone blitz. Like, just don't. Just be a normal human and watch a game. Like, don't do that. Also, um, uh, uniforms are not outfits. Do not say that. And <laughs> never say something's fair or unfair. I don't care if someone gets 
uh, butt sexed on the game. Like, don't ever say that's not fair or unfair. It is a penalty or it is not a penalty. There's no middle ground there. There can't be fair and unfair. No, no. You're sure? This is not a PTA meeting. This is not like parking lot assignments. If you get sexually assaulted during a game and you're a player on the field, I'm pretty sure that's unfair. 15 yard penalty on sportsmanlike conduct. That's a penalty. We're not. We're not debating the nuances of fair and unfair. We're debating so that is a penalty or it is not a penalty. Well, okay. So my issue with uh, my last issue for me is um, when you're coming to a football game or you're watching football with a group of people and you come just to be social, which is fine. Like you said, act normal, be normal. Mm-hmm. The worst thing that you can say in a room full of people watching a sport is that you don't watch sports. Right. No. Like at no point in the time that you're in, you're a guest in another person's home. Should you ever reference that you're not into football or that, Oh, I don't even watch. It's like going to somebody to watch a TV show and you're like, I don't even own a TV. Like you can't do that. No, you cannot do that. There's two things that make me hate you. There's two things that make me actively hate you. I don't watch TV. And I'm not into sports. Like people who actively celebrate that, like anytime this, when the Super Bowl's on, there's always people on social media who are like, oh, is there a game on? Like, I don't even care. It's just stupid. Like, I'm doing something important. Like, shut up. Just shut up. No one cares about you. You are so stupid. Put that away. Similarly, do not come to a social football watching event and celebrate your ignorance with football. It's not cool. No one likes you. You are the worst. Not cool. Not cool. That was actually a lot of the people that we asked, because we asked this question on Twitter and Facebook, what were people's football pet peeves? And they decidedly moved into two camps, which are people who hate football and people who really love it and have strong opinions about it. Can I read some of our responses? All right. So we got um, a, a really fair criticism from Andrew Brassfield, who said on Twitter, more of a statement, sportsmanship is dead. I agree with that. Sportsmanship amongst friends and fans, particularly in college football, which I'm a huge college football fan. I feel like it's not even about – it's like it's just like my team and no other team. My team and no other team. It's the new tribalism, Jamie. That's all it is. I hate it. It feels like politics. Like football it starts does. to feel like politics, and I hate it. Like just how about we want teams to do well minus Tennessee. We want teams to do well. I see what you did just there. minus Tennessee. Let's, You're ready. Let's right. see what you did there. Um. All right, we had uh, Ben Stafford uh, might have been on Twitter said, if we're talking televised football, it's got to be pre-game commentary and post-game commentary, totally unnecessary. Do you agree? I think I – okay, largely yes. There are slivers of good insight, like game day uh, on ESPN. I'm good with that. Like that helps. Anything Kirk Herbstreit, Chris Fowler bringing the table, I'm good with. Uh, some of the other stuff like the NFL pregames, it's just it's just stupid. It's just a bunch ben, of people being stupid. Ben, I'm going to tell you, I'm okay with any commentary with a guy who looks good in a suit. Okay. Tim Tebow can talk about football all day long. Uh, Tim Tebow, David Pollock, where are you at? Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow, Kirk but Street. I've heard sketchy things about Her- Herb. That's an allegation, Jamie Golden. I've heard sketchy things about him in a. And I'm, and I'm, in regards to his marriage. So I'm going to stick with Tim Tebow. I think those sketchy things are founded from my research, Jamie Golden. <laughs> so I, like, I'm going to stick with Tim Tebow. Okay. Even though I feel like Tim Tebow doesn't really know a lot about talking about football. And so I don't know that that's his wheelhouse right now. Maybe it'll get better. As I don't, the, sometimes the I don't know that Tim Tebow's great at talking. There it is. There you go. There's that. That's fine. Can I ask this? One last yes. question. Tim Tebow comes to you and says, Jamie, I'll be true to you forever. Chris Hemsworth comes to you and says, Jamie... I'll be true to you for a while. Where do you go? Uh, the Trump is the accent. It's Hemsworth. Okay. There you go. Just wanted to see where you're if at. If an Australian will be true to you for 10 minutes, you always pick that. <laughs> That's always true. That's always true. Um, I do want to read a couple more. Sarah McStevens said on Twitter, uh, holding her pet peeves are holding calls. Hotty toddy. I, I hear that. Old man, I hear that. <laughs> the wave. I agree. The wave. We have to stop that. People – now, this is where I'm going to take uh, issue. People who call cool weather football weather. It is football weather, Sarah. Where does Sarah live? Weather. Sarah lives in Tennessee. 
Sarah, I live in Tennessee too. I don't even know what you're talking about. That's the only thing we have to hold on to. It is it. it is football weather. When cool Sarah, weather starts happening, that tells me it's football time. Sarah, please don't call cool weather pumpkin spice latte weather. Don't you or, dare. Or I'll have to come after you. Like that's not okay. Um uh Tiffany Olson said people who will answer the question of what their greatest pet peeve is if they answer that question with football. She's correct. That a she lot of people correct. that was a lot like, of people did answer the question with the word football. I had to do some uh, acrobatics. Uh, hello, I talk a lot for my life. I had to do some mental acrobatics to answer that question. Um, so it took me a while, but yeah, I agree with her. To really think about that. Yeah. Um, Jess Goodwin, some people who did not enjoy football, she said literally everything about it, but mostly the way it turned some of my favorite bars into cesspools for half the year. I've, I, I love watching. That. I love watching a football game in a bar. Like, there's something magical about it. Maybe, but it's also like, let's give all these drunk people a, a reason to try to draw more attention to themselves. That's true. That's fair. That's fair. Um, uh, Allie Haberman said, my husband telling me to watch this replay when he knows I don't like football. She's, she says, I don't tell him to watch Jersey Shore reruns. <laughs> That's fair, Allie. That's very fair. Ferdosa Abdi said, can the entire sport be a pet peeve um Catherine our dear friend friend of me Catherine okay said, hold on before you start talking I'm gonna, I'm basically tying myself to like the post of a boat and like blindfolding myself and and because I know she's gonna provoke me you ready I, I don't want to be drawn into it all right so here she goes uh she said uh the ball is really an unappealing shade of brown I vote that they change it to neon yellow so we can see it better change approved she said, uh, when games run over and totally script the start time for the good wife, uh, Catherine said people who gloat mercilessly over wins and whine incessantly about bad calls on social media, just scream into a pillow or bite a towel. And then she said, so they're really letting, and by the way, this is all on Twitter. So this was like 17 tweets. Mm -hmm. Catherine said, so they're really letting the Redskins keep that name. Not surprising, I guess, coming from the quote, we never saw the video people. So that was a personal hit to the NFL it was. Uh, lots, of, lots of feelings there, Catherine. Lots of feelings. A lot of feelings, Catherine. A lot of feelings. So, um, And Robin Hill on Twitter said, the fans. And Jennifer, Tenacious Jen on Twitter said, my biggest pet peeve about football is the NFL. Hashtag Ray Rice. Yeah. So, I mean, what, you know. What yeah, you... it's not great. I mean, it's it's all head injuries and domestic violence. Look, the, I mean, the most unappealing part of going to a live game are the people you have to be around. It's the worst. It's yeah, it the is the actual worst. worst part. It's so bad. Yeah. So, um, but I do agree, and we stand by the turtle. Uh, people who go out of their way to say, I don't watch sports. No. Laura McClellan said, passive aggressive posts, especially regarding bandwagon fans. You shouldn't have to justify new fandom to longtime fans. That's right. Like, if I want to root for a team, I'm with Laura on that. Like, why? Just because I wasn't born into a Packers jersey mm -hmm. doesn't mean I can't be a Packers fan. No, you can root for stories. Listen, listen, it's kind of herd mentality to only cheer for one team just because it's all you, you've always cheered for. I didn't grow up with a team. Uh, I liked Florida State when I was young because I liked Indian stuff. Oh. Like I liked air, I liked trying to find arrowheads uh, in my yard, and I never <laughs> did, Jamie. So you were an Atlanta Braves fan? Uh, I was, yeah. And then yeah. I started playing for the Red Sox. I started liking the Red Sox. And then Florida State players started getting arrested, so I didn't like them as much. But I just kind of, I just kind of moved around. I like this story. I like this dude. I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to watch them. It's okay. You can do that. You can do that's totally allowable people. Yeah. So the, the final answer from social media, uh, one of the final we'll mention is Lori Frazier powers. Her biggest pet peeve about football is the fact that it's on. Uh, and we do know a lot of you are not, you're not football fans, but it doesn't mean you can't be respectful of those who are. And the same is true, vice versa, that we can be respectful of the fact that you don't all love it. But mute a hashtag, y'all. Just hide some people for a season. You can do that. It's fine. Uh, so in summation, don't say outfits. Don't say fair on fair. Um, don't be late. And don't expect to have a seat when you show up late, Jamie Colton. <sighs> Let us know what you think. Facebook.com slash the podcast.